Welcome. In this episode, we're visiting the West Walker River along Highway 395 in California on the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada mountains. We're going to be going up this uh, narrow valley right there along the river and we're going to look at some very old tree stumps that offer some clues about a 100 year drought that happened many years ago. Here it is, uh, October 20th, and the West Walker River still has a pretty good flow. And you can see that it's fed by snow that still remains in the High Sierra that hasn't melted this summer. That snow up there is left over from the uh, 2023 uh, huge snowpack that California received. And you can see uh, a thousand years ago there was probably a lot less snow during the mega drought, during the medieval warm period. And again, this West Walker River was uh, more like a seasonal creek that allowed these, um, these big, huge Jeffrey pines to live uh, right near the creek bed. Once the mega droughts were over a thousand years ago, these Jeffrey pines had no chance to survive in the bed of the West Walker River. The tree stumps are not uh, fossilized tree stumps. They're actually still wood. They're maybe called uh, pre-fossilized, but again, they died about a thousand years ago. I'll, I'll tap this one with the stick. And it, it does sound uh, pretty rotted, but uh, again, there's enough uh, material here for the scientists to uh, take samples and use the radiocarbon dating to dial in the exact age of these tree stumps. All right, these are the West Walker River Jeffrey Pine tree stumps. It's been determined that these Jeffrey Pines were alive roughly between the years 900 and 1150, and then between 1200 and 1350. The fact that the stumps are in the middle of the West Walker River is assumed to prove that there were very long droughts about a thousand years ago during the time of the medieval warm period. This is roughly the time when the Vikings had farms in Greenland, when they grew wheat in southern Iceland, when they had vineyards in central England, and when Europe had explosive growth and big harvests during the medieval warm period. The person who figured out the significance of these old tree stumps in the West Walker River was Professor Scott Stein of Cal State University Hayward, now known as Cal State University East Bay. Professor Stein used a process called radiocarbon dating to determine when the tree stumps died. He took samples of the outer ring and then he compared the ratio of normal carbon isotope with the radioactive carbon-14 isotope. Carbon-14 is formed by the interaction of sun rays with nitrogen in the atmosphere. The carbon-14 decays over time and turns back into nitrogen, but it's continually being replenished by new interactions of the sun with nitrogen in the atmosphere. And in effect, it keeps the ratio of the normal carbon isotope and the radioactive carbon 14 isotope in the atmosphere at a constant ratio. Although the amount of carbon 14 is a very trace amount. For the Jeffrey Pine tree stumps, the carbon 14 that was taken in when the tree grew a thousand years ago in the outer ring. As soon as the tree died from the rise of the river flooding out the trees, the carbon-14 isotope started decaying. And thus, over time, the ratio of carbon-14 to the normal carbon isotope 
decreased over time. And the rate of decay is predictable and known. And so based on the ratio of the carbon-14 to the normal carbon isotope, scientists can determine the age of when something uh, was formed, when organic material, something based on carbon, uh, when, it, when it was created. Professor Stein referred to the outer ring in the tree stumps as the kill ring. That's the, uh, would represent the date when the uh, um, trees were flooded and, and when they uh, stopped living. Professor Stein was amazed to find two periods of 100-year-plus uh, drought roughly a thousand years ago during the medieval warm period. Professor Stein published his breakthrough results in the scientific journal called Nature. And then the news spread wide and far in newspapers all across America in 1994 including this article in the Los Angeles Times, roughly 30 years ago. Although Professor Stein didn't determine the cause of the 100-year mega droughts from 1,000 years ago, he pointed out that they were caused by natural causes and possibly included things such as random atmospheric variability, natural variations in the upwelling rate of deep ocean currents, solar variability, variations in volcanic aerosols, and natural changes in atmospheric trace gases. A major point made in all of the articles in 1994 covering Professor Stein's work was that California is likely to have natural droughts that can last 100 years. And actually, California's water policy has been based on the last 150 years, which Professor Stein thought might have been some of the wettest uh, climate that California's had in the last thousand years. There's quite a few of these tree stumps in the river. These are just a few that uh, I came across where I stopped along the side of US Highway 395. It's pretty cool to visit a place like this where there's clues and remaining evidence of a huge drought in California's history from a thousand years ago. It's, uh, it's easy to visit. The spot where I stopped along the West Walker River to look at the tree stumps was about three and a half miles south of the junction of the Sonora Pass Road, Highway 108, with Highway 395. And here we are looking south on 395, and again, you can see in the high Sierra Mountains, snowpack still left over from the big snow of 2023, still melting to feed rivers like uh, the West Walker River. This is an air view of the tree stumps that I looked at. It shows a big area where you can park on the side of Highway 395. And then there's a place you can walk down to the West Walker Riverbed to get a closer look at the tree stumps. The West Walker River, East Walker River, Walker Lake, Walker Pass, all of these places are named after Joseph Walker. He was a explorer and trapper that was one of the first persons to cross the Sierra Nevada mountains to go into California in 1833. And he, uh, on his trip in 1833, he kind of uh, discovered a large part of the California trail along the Humboldt River in Nevada. And in the background here, you can see US Highway 395 which makes it very easy to visit these tree stumps. This is Mono Lake along Highway 395, a little bit to the south of the West Walker River. Professor Stein also studied some tree stumps that were submerged in this lake 
what happened was in the 1970s, California had a pretty good drought. And also at that time, the city of Los Angeles was taking a lot of water from the Mono Lake Basin. And the level of the lake receded quite a bit and it exposed some old tree stumps. And Professor Stein did the radiocarbon dating on the tree stumps that were discovered here submerged. And just like the tree stumps in the West Walker River, the tree stumps submerged in this lake dated back to the medieval warm period, about a thousand years ago. So again, more evidence for a mega drought that hit California about a thousand years ago. 100 year drought. This is Tenaya Lake in Yosemite National Park. This is one of the locations that Professor Stein researched and did the radiocarbon dating on submerged tree stumps that show the 100 year long droughts from a thousand years ago during the medieval warm period. Professor Stein also looked at a couple of lakes in Argentina on the east side of the Andes Mountains in kind of a desert area, kind of like the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. The circled lake is Lago Cardiel. Carbon-14 dating of the submerged tree stumps at Lago Cardiel showed the same results as the tree stumps found in the West Walker River. 100 year mega drought hit this location also during the medieval warm period. Professor Stein's radiocarbon 14 data from submerged tree stumps shows 100 year mega drought during the medieval warm period in both the northern and southern hemisphere. During the medieval warm period it appears that desert regions in North America extended to the north and that desert regions in South America extended to the south. Over the last 30 years, submerged tree stumps have been found in several other California lakes and they've been radiocarbon dated back to the medieval warm period, providing possible evidence of a big change from a dry climate to a wet climate about a thousand years ago. The places include Fallen Leaf Lake, shown here, and Donner Lake, shown here, and Lake Tahoe shown here.